Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here, and today I want to talk about freedom in relationships. Um, freedom is something the Lord has been teaching me the past 20 or 30 years, every day, at every level, in myself mostly, because I was in so much bondage, so many chains, so many blinders, so many beams, so, I mean, it was ridiculous, really, and he had to just set me free one thing at a time, and he's been doing this to teach me freedom in myself, with him, firstly, freedom in myself, with myself, which has been hard, and then freedom with other people in relationships, and freedom in society as a whole. So this freedom has been a real theme, a huge theme in my growth, and the more I have internalized it and uh, understood it, as the Holy Spirit has taught me, the more wonderful and real it has become. So in 2 Corinthians 3.17, it says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now, for me, and maybe for you, if you want to use it, that can be a plumb line for you, for everything in your life, including your relationships. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom freedom. So we can deduce from that that if we're in a situation and there's not freedom there, then there's another spirit that is there that is not the Holy Spirit. It is an unholy spirit and we can see it and take authority over it and do whatever we need to do to get rid of it. We can tell the person if they're entertaining it and inviting it back in you know, we can deal with that. And then ultimately, we don't have to go back to that situation if there's never freedom there, unless the Lord is calling us to do something in that vein. Okay? So all of my friendships are all totally free. We're free. I have a friend at church, and we used to see each other regularly. Our temperaments are very much the same. We understand each other totally. We don't even have to say it. We already get what the other one is thinking and saying. And right now she's caring for her mom, who is really old. And I don't get to see her that much. Um, you know, and, and I do miss her sometimes. But I'm not saying to her, well, you don't see me as much as you used to. I'm not trying to uh, force something that's not meant to be at this time. She's there to care for her mother and that's taken up all of her time and energy and there's none for me and that's okay with me because I know the Lord is calling her to that so all of my friends we can see each other regularly or we cannot see each other for two years but you know what right when we get back together we pick up right where we left off we don't ever say well you didn't invite me to that party or you didn't call me or you we don't do that that's one of the foundational principles in any relationship I have and I always tell people that you're free to do whatever you don't don't feel obligated like you have to call me or like you have to like you're on a leash I'm like you're on my leash I don't do that so I have total freedom in every relationship and I'm getting freedom in my marriage relationship through some ridiculous circumstances that have had to happen but if that's what it takes, whatever. So, you know, having freedom in the marriage relationship is very relieving to me. And I know my health is going to improve even more because of that. One problem we have is when we're raised by certain types of parents. I had a parent who was extremely controlling and very critical. So I was basically destroyed by the time I was four years old. Um, there wasn't much of me left. So... Um, so in my mind, my brain was formed around that, and it thought, even though it was wrong, that that was normal. And so that's why I was attracted to some personality who was overbearing and who was critical. And so that has been extremely damaging to my spirit over the years. But as I, the Lord has grown me up, and I've grown in the, in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have learned to have a voice to say no to have a boundary, to push back, because before I couldn't do that. So having that muscle where you can, um, you know, as much as lay down the law if you have to, is important in relationships because you want freedom, but you're going to run into people who are bullies, who are overbearing, who are manipulative, who are controlling, and the Lord can teach you how to deal with these people. 
He can teach you. And He can teach you to speak the truth in love and give them a, an option of what they want to do. And whatever they do is their decision. It has nothing to do with you. Okay? So that was my problem. And we had to separate and grow up in the Lord. And But those early relationships that we have, and we can all look back on our parents and the early um, you know, situations that we were raised in that shape our view of God. They shape our view of ourselves and they shape our view of what a normal relationship is. So we can be in a relationship that we feel is normal and right, but it can be very unhealthy because we were raised in that situation. So I just want to give you a heads up on freedom in relationships and be open to let the Holy Spirit say, you know, tap, tap on the shoulder, this person is trespassing and you don't realize it, or tap, tap, you're trespassing and you don't realize it. Okay, so um, the Holy Spirit has to teach us what is healthy and what freedom is because we're not, we don't know what freedom is. We were not born into freedom. We were born into slavery. And so he has to teach us what freedom is. And what is freedom is where the Spirit of the Lord is. That is where the freedom is. Okay, it comes only from the Lord. And we can move into that territory and we can end up living in that territory. The territory of freedom where you're free to be who you are right at the moment. There's no performance. There's no box to check. There's nothing you have to do to be the new nature. You can be the new nature and be uh, tied up in a mental institute. You take a $100 bill that is crisp and brand new and you can crush it up throw it in the mud, stomp on it all day long, it's still worth $100. See, that's the new nature that God has made us. It doesn't matter what happens to you, what condition you're in. He's taking care of all of that, all the way down to the subatomic level. So we don't have to worry about that. We can just be who we are and keep our eyes on Him and seek Him and know that He has our back. Okay? So I hope that you will seek the freedom that comes in Jesus Christ and that only he can offer and that only he gives freely to those who believe that it exists and that uh, he will reward you when you seek him and you seek his freedom. When you're seeking him, you're seeking freedom. You just don't realize it because he is the definition of freedom, he, he and his Holy Spirit. Okay, so I pray that you will seek the freedom that the Lord has to offer you and you be brave. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by these um, things that come against you when you start seeking freedom. Just know, just listen and follow the Holy Spirit no matter what comes against you. And, and by the way, the more things that come against you when you're seeking something like that, it means that what you're seeking is a threat to the enemy. He doesn't want you to go there. So it should be more of a motivation for you to keep seeking. See? Because he sees that as a threat. And he doesn't want you going there. Because he wants to bully you and manipulate you and boss you around. But he's not your boss. You're his boss in Christ. Okay? So I hope something I've said has been helpful. And I'll see you guys next time.